to think I've still got it. I took four E's last night. That was a tough hand at Scrabble. <laughs> and then I thought, ooh, squeegee. <laughs> Some proper nerds in tonight. That is excellent. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. Genuinely. I checked it. Lovely. <laughs> When you get a new car, you're paranoid about scratching it. I parked at Asda. When I came out, there was a big gash on the bonnet. I said, Madam. <laughs> There's usually more to that joke, but tonight... Never try and use a Ouija board to contact the ghost of a dyslexic. Not a good idea. <laughs> Spirit guide, what is your name? P V L R F. Is that you, Steve? <laughs> I'm still a bit shaken up. I was involved in quite a violent mugging the other day, but on the plus side, did make a few quid. Swings and roundabouts. Yeah. I usually find that's the best place. Oh. 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 You can't mug adults. <laughs> oh. I had a vindaloo last night and today my arse really stings. Couldn't afford to pay the bill and the chef bummed me. <laughs> Sorry. I'm aware that's a very immature joke. I'm sorry, it's not. It's... <laughs> I was in a queue at the fairground for the I Guess Your Weight stall. Eventually, I get to the front. The guy looks at me, goes, well, I'd say that was about 20 minutes. I'm not really good at dwarf impressions. Still, hey-ho. <laughs> I was doing some shows in Wales and I went to a tourist attraction called the Devil's Bridge. Got its name from the fact that it's where they used to try witches. And what they would do was they'd chuck some poor woman off the top of the bridge. And the idea was if she was a witch, she'd fly away. Whereas if she was innocent, she'd fall to her death on the M4. <laughs> If anything, finding out that Jimmy Savile was a paedophile made it even worse that he never answered my letters. <laughs> all of my favourite 70s kids TV stars, they've all been done for it now, haven't they? Jimmy Savile, Rolf Harris, Stuart Hall. I bet Finger Mouse is shitting himself. <laughs> By the way, for anyone under 40, <laughs> there genuinely was a kids' TV programme called Finger Mouse. And in the 70s and the 80s, that was perfectly acceptable. Somebody walked into the BBC and said, I've got an idea for a series for kids. And they went, what do you do? And he goes, well, basically, I finger a mouse. <laughs> and they went, well, fuck it, you're hired. Come on in. That's the least sinister thing going on at the BBC right now. Have... <laughs> <laughs> And many times I tried to get that joke on Mock the Week and I was never fucking allowed. <laughs> never. <laughs> oh. You're a, a pretty outrageous crowd, that's good. Because so, some nights you just leave out the dodgy ones, but tonight they're all staying in, so that's nice. And that means I get to do this one. Uh, here we go. A paedophile goes into a florist. I'd like some flowers, please. All kids? No, just the flowers. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I went to see an acupuncturist when I got home. My voodoo doll was dead.
I read a book on Stockholm Syndrome, started badly, but by the end I loved it. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what really boils my piss. Hotel room kettles. <laughs> if a man uses too much pornography, eventually it starts to affect his whole attitude towards slags. <laughs> <laughs> I went out with an optician, but she'd always take ages to get dressed. She'd be like, does my bum look big in this? <laughs> and now... <laughs> How about now? <laughs> Why is it that every time they put a new bench in the park, an old person has to die? <laughs> Why is it that every time I go to the gym, Princess Diana dies? <laughs> My sister's got two small children, which happens if you smoke whilst pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> People always described Cliff Richard as asexual, but I'd also add be gay. Dave drowned, so at his funeral, we got him a wreath in the shape of a life belt. Uh, uh, well... That's uh, what he would have wanted. I was in WH Smith's. I bought a book of a thousand raffle tickets for £2.50, which is a bargain, because normally they're a pound a strip. I didn't win. <laughs> Panty liners, that was the worst cruise I've ever been on. <laughs> Especially the Red Sea. <laughs> that was a beautiful, disgusted noise. Oh, that was amazing. <laughs> Recently, I was fingered for a crime, which is quite a harsh punishment. <laughs> when I was young, I went out with an older woman who taught me that the best way to perform cunnilingus is to use your tongue to trace out the letters of the alphabet. So I learned how to do that, and I was pretty pleased in myself, and then she left me for a Chinese guy. <laughs> Well done on getting that one, by the way. That's excellent, right. Oh, I forgot to do this at the top. The venue asked me to, to read out an announcement on their behalf, so just, just let, me, let me do that now. Here, let me get this. Here we go. Uh, right. Um, we'd like to apologise unreservedly to the hen party we had in last night that we did not provide the stripper Mr Manhood they'd been expecting. We would also like to apologise to Mr Mahood for any embarrassment... <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's Day, she got all upset when she found out that I'd wiped my knob on the box of chocolates I'd given her. You know. Luckily, I managed to come out of it smelling of roses. <laughs> <laughs> she always says, my problem is I never follow through on projects, so I shat on her stamp click. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the efforts of men like my granddad that we don't speak German today, because he single-handedly killed 11 language teachers. <laughs> I've got a small penis, but it's all right because my girlfriend's an optimist. To her, the vagina is always half full. 
By the way, ladies, I mean, obviously that's not true. She recently said that I've got a cock like a donkey. Yeah. Turned out she meant the smell. <laughs> oh. Which does pose the question, how does she know what a donkey's cock smells like? <laughs> but at least now I know why she's banned from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. <laughs> and why she always called it that. I always vowed I'd never molest my pet lions and eventually I had to swallow my pride. <laughs> I was woken up last night by the bulimic upstairs vomiting, so I banged on the ceiling going, Oi, keep it down. It's easy to scoff. I should. Uh, and, <laughs> I found my male G spot. Well, actually, it was a customs officer that found it. <laughs> I just bought him dinner. <laughs> a friend of mine said, "If I text another man and put a kiss at the end, is that a bit gay?" I said, "What are you texting him?" He said, "A picture of my cock." <laughs> dun, dun. <laughs> it makes very little difference. <laughs> I've been going out with an English teacher, which is a bit awkward because she keeps on correcting my grammar during sex. I'm like, who's the daddy? Who's the daddy? She's no, the daddy's whom. <laughs> I'm like, suck it good, bitch. She's no, it suck it well. <laughs> and she gets particularly annoyed at my improper use of the colon. <laughs> I don't like it when you're kissing a girl and you suddenly realise her eyes are open. It's like, shit, she's coming round. <laughs> I went to the supermarket and they had a special on. He collects the trolley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sexual problems are hard for men to talk about. As I said, I suffered from premature ejaculation, but I was too shy, too embarrassed for anything about it. Eventually screwed up the courage to go and see my doctor, showed her my penis, said, look, I'm worried I might be a bit premature. She said, you certainly are. I'm the receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> I was in town early and I saw people collecting for Parkinson's and they were shaking tins, which I thought was a bit insensitive. <laughs> Because people collect money for anything nowadays, call it a charity. Recently, I saw this woman collecting for reconstructive vaginal surgery following the birth of her eight children. There she was outside Tesco's, waving her bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, if you think your partner's got a rather large vagina, it's important to never let on to that fact. And believe me, I know, as I once put my foot in it. I like this section because these jokes have definitely never been on the fucking telly. <laughs> I joined a fisting club, not something particularly into. I'm just trying to widen the circle of my friends. <laughs> Shouldn't do that, you know, the uh, first rule of fisting club, you do not talk about fisting club. Second rule, think about cutting your nails. You know what it's like when you're wanking off three bus drivers at once and it's taken ages and then suddenly... <laughs> the irony of finishing that one off yourselves. Uh... Last, right. Um... Final thing. Who, who wants to see what my sex face looks like? Everybody? Great, OK. <laughs> Give me 10 seconds to get ready over here.
Paul, you've been amazing. Thank you. Good night. Having Gary Laney. Good night.